Good morning, good morning, and uh, praise the Lord. May the Lord uh, bless you and uh, continue to be gracious to you wherever you are, even for t- tuning in to this important forum as we share the word of God together. It is important to know that one of the important tenets of Christian ministry and Christian fellowship is uh, uh, coming together of brothers and sisters to share the word of God, to pray together, and even to feel the warmth of real fellowship. And we are grateful that you can be able to find fellowship with one another, though are we, but we thank God that you can be able to find fellowship with one another, even through the word of God. Let us pray together as we share the word of God this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the whole week that you have been with us. And we want to thank you for this day that you have set before us, that we may be able to come together through the word of God. As we share your word, O God, we know that the word of God is your truth, is the mystery that only you can be able to unlock. We pray that you help us to understand. Open our inner spiritual ears and that we may be able to open our spiritual eyes, that we may be able to see and hear that which is your will for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you, brethren. Now, this week, we have continued to... Uh, think through and be able to ask ourselves about the levels in which we need to grow into Christian service and ministry. By the way, we have been asking the Lord to give us the grace to be committed to the Christian service, to our calling, to the gifts that the Lord has given us, just through his grace. And you remember, even Paul was saying that uh, because of the masses of God, in other words, whatever we have received, we have just received by the grace and the masses of God. Not because of light standing, not because of many things that we can blag about, but it's just because of the mere grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for that reason, we pick up these things with honor. And also it becomes a place that we can be able to give back to the, to the love of God, to show that we have accepted the love of God by fully committing ourselves to the kingdom of God. Allow me to say this. One of the most important things to show love is commitment. Have you ever known, even when Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples in the book of John, chapter 15, and he said that, and they shall know, this, the world shall know that you, that you belong to me if you continue to obey my commandments. When you love one another and you obey my commandments, then the world will know that you belong to me. And he said, you, you, you cannot say that you love me unless you obey my commandments. In that commitment is a sign and a show of true love. And therefore, when God calls us to commit ourselves, he is asking us, do you truly love me? Remember when Peter, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and he went and found that Peter had led the disciples back to the fishing, uh, to the fishing expedition, and he told them, now, Peter, uh, son of Jonah, do you still love me? And then he told him, you know what? Be committed to my flock. Be committed to my lambs. In other words, commitment is a true show of love. And therefore, for us to be able to say that we love the Lord with all our heart, our mind, and soul, the only thing that we can be able to show as a sign is when we are fully commitment, committed to the kingdom and also to the service of God. Now, brethren, this morning, I want us to go to the last level that we had mentioned. I just chose three levels. I know there can be several levels, but I just so show, uh, chose the three levels, which I call the primary, the second, and the tertiary. Today, I turn to the tertiary level. Now, they are the higher level of calling, even when we commit ourselves to the kingdom of God. Remember, the first one was the personal uh, growth to spiritual commitment. Number two was the, 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 the growth to the, to the commitment to the primary body of Jesus Christ, which we call the, the local body of Christ. And finally today, I want to talk about the level of commitment to the ministry of the kingdom of God. And now when I talk about the ministry, is the, the, the whole ministry of the kingdom of God. You know, God has not just called us uh, for our local churches. God has not just called us that we may be able to be happy in our personal life. God has called us that we may go forth to the entire world. Remember the Great Commission that go out there into the whole world making discipleship of me, that men and women may be delivered from sin, may be delivered from the, from the bondage of evil, and they may be able to have an encounter with the Savior, even our Lord Jesus Christ. And for that reason, I want us to go now into several issues. Number one, I want to lead from the book of Romans chapter 12, which you have been leading, and I want to lead now verses 6 to 8. Verses 6 to 8. This is what the Bible says. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. 
If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to read, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, brethren, Paul is calling that after we have given ourselves fully to the commitment of God, we also need to know our praise of ministry. Now, this morning, on the tertiary level of calling, one of the things that we must be sure about is our praise of service, our praise of ministry. You know, sometimes you can do so much in different places, which really you are not called in those areas. Now, I don't know if you have ever known, uh, sometimes it can be very, very disappointing and discouraging when you are given to work in a place that you have no skill, you have no passion about. Uh, and I think that is one of the difficult things that we see now, even when we see people choosing their careers. I'm one of the persons who have encouraged even the young people when they're choosing their careers, that they are supposed not only to go for money, they are not only supposed to go and look at, nowadays people Google, even how much money that somebody can get in a particular career, in a particular company, in a particular corporate. But I've always encouraged them, please, money is not everything. Would you mind also to seek and ask of yourself, what is your passion in life? Because when you serve and do service, or even when you go to a career that you are passionate about, one of the things that you can never get from money is satisfaction. When you are satisfied about what you are doing, it doesn't matter how much you are getting. It doesn't matter how you are working from. It doesn't matter where you are going. It doesn't matter the people around you. You always find satisfaction. And if there is anything that is important in this life, is what Jesus said, and you, that we, we know the Lord Jesus Christ will have life and have it in abundance. The abundance of life is when you have the spirit of satisfaction. You are able to be contented. And that is great gain, brethren to be contented, to be happy about what you are doing. And therefore, even when you choose to do what you are supposed to do, sometimes it's good to ask yourself, what did God wire you to become? Now, even in the issues of the kingdom, Paul is reminding them, yes, I told you to give yourself fully to the kingdom of God, but you don't just give yourself, you give yourself to a place of your calling. Now he says, people have been given different gifts through God's grace. Maybe I'm talking to people that have been given gifts in different diverse Maybe God has called you to be a musician. Maybe God has called you to be an intercessor. Maybe God has called you to serve men. Maybe God has called you to preach the word of God. Maybe God has called you to be a pastor, a teacher, and even an apostle. Maybe God has called you even to be a men and women who can be able to great leaders, to be great leaders in the issues of the kingdom. Now, Paul encourages them that they need to know the praise of their calling. And therefore, this day, as we get to the very high level of being able to minister to the body of Christ in holiness, not about your local church this morning, not about your denomination, not about where you have been called and you have been grown, but God is willing that we may be able to, uh, uh, to serve the Lord, not in a confinement of our denominations, but to the body of Jesus Christ all over the world. And for us to do that, number one, we must be able to understand the praise of our ministry. Now, when we know the place of our ministry, then at least we can be able to identify. Now, this morning I call to us, by God's grace, it is important to be able to understand where God has called you. Now, allow me to say this, and this is something that at least gets a lot of confusion. You know, there is a difference between what people say you are and what God says you are and what you know you are. I know, I know sometimes, by the way, one of the things that uh, we must have a testimony. We must have a testimony from God. We must have a testimony from you as an individual. And also, you must have a testimony with people about your calling. You know, sometimes we may think that you are very good, a good musician. But when you sing, people know that's what, what you are called to do. By the way, it's good to listen. I have ever seen people who completely uh, die on a particular thing. They say, me, I know and I feel I'm called to be a poet. But even when you do a, poet, a poem, you realize that it's neither here nor there. There is a program that comes in our screens uh, called uh, Talanta Mitaani. And uh, sometimes I see guys come there and they have uh, a lot of belief on themselves. And you realize somebody, even when how he comes to the stage, he has a lot of belief on himself that he can be able to do it. I am not saying it is wrong to believe in yourself. But sometimes it's not good to believe in yourself in the long way. 
it is important also to open your ears. And I have even heard people being told in that forum that you know what I think? You are not called to sing, but you are called to be, uh, uh, to be uh, one thing or the other. And I have always thought that it is true some of these people have been given the right advice. It is also good to know hear from other people around you. And that's why yesterday we said we must grow from our local body of Jesus Christ because they will be able to assure us, affirm us who we are. Like what we were leading last week about Timothy, that hands were laid on him to affirm his gift of readership to the, to the church of Jesus Christ. And when that is affirmed, we also get assurance from God. And you know the inner assurance of God is peace and satisfaction about what you are doing. When you realize you are at peace with yourself and you are satisfied about, even if it's a very difficult task, when you are done, you feel a lot of satisfaction. It is not even about how much you get or how much fame you have from people, but when you feel that when you're going down even to strip, you feel you are satisfied. That one gives you an assurance to know this is where I'm called, the praise of my ministry. And they can also be followed by how much you are aggressive and ambitious about it, how you are able to sacrifice a lot to see that you are uh, on that particular. But when you see that you are tired to wake up to go to a particular thing, sometimes every time you are supposed to be pulled your legs and hands so that to be there, though sometimes you, everybody feel that you, and you keep being pulled and you feel that your heart is not there, it is good to find where God has called you and your place of ministry. Now, number two, number two, number two is now putting your hands to the job. Now, on this level, is not only understanding the place of your calling, but also putting your hands to the job, putting your hands to the work, putting your hands to do that which you have called to do. Allow me to say this, that there are things that Paul is saying here, that if you are called to prophecy, prophesy. But he also says, don't just prophesy, but I prophesy according to the faith that has been given to you. I want to tell you, brethren, one of the things I have learned it is important also to know the way you are supposed to do these things. Now, when you talk about by the faith that you have been given, it means please don't prophesy things that are beyond what God has already told you in his spirit. In other words, you know there are people who God gives them even a gift of prophecy, and then it's like they feel now they use that gift to scare men around, sometimes to get their way, sometimes to prophesy to make some other people happy, like the prophets of the old, they used to prophesy, some of them prophesy to the, to the king so that they can be happy. It is prophesying in accordance with the faith that have been laid in our lives. Allow me also to say that if it is about service, you give willingly, the word is willingly. Don't just give grudgingly. Can you give willingly the service of the Lord? If you are an usher, my brother and sister, usher with joy, usher with in the willing. And if it is to arrange books, if it is to clean the church, do it with all your heart and all your mind. If it's about the, uh, to be in the choir or in the priest team, do it fully. Give yourself fully to the service of the kingdom. By the way, you should know that where God has praised you, you know why he has praised you. If it is teaching the Sunday school or even mentoring the young people and mentoring the teens and the youth, do it with all your heart. Allow me also to say, if it's about encouragement, you know this word is, uh, is full of discouragement. People who critique, I, I know we are more people who criticize than people who encourage. I remember a gentleman in the book of Acts who was called Barnabas, and he was called the son of encouragement. You know, he used to encourage the Apostle Paul. He used to encourage the Apostles alone, just to encourage them to do what they're supposed to do. May the Lord grant you, if you have been given the spirit of encouragement, fear not, keep encouraging the people around you. Keep telling them, well done. Keep telling them you can do it. Because some of us, we are not given big grit, but even the gift of encouragement is as important as the gift of prophecy. And finally, the there is also something that he says, two things. He also talks about if it's giving. I know there are people that one of the calling they have, they cannot speak in tongues, they cannot preach, they cannot do any other things, but they are able to give even their money to the service of the kingdom. They are able to give faithfully their tithe. They are able to give faithfully to the people in need, the, 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 the ministry of mass. They are able to give to the people who are going through difficult times. If that is your calling, they, we are told when you give, give generously. Don't give it, uh, uh, you give it um, uh, withholding. Just give it generously. And when you give it generously, you also find God's blessing. And finally he says, and if you are still having the gift of mercy, do it cheerfree. In other words, don't do it as if you have a groomy face. Do it cheerfree. Do it as you have been called to do it. And God will continue to bless us. Now, brethren, may the Lord bless you so much. 
May the Lord cause in our hearts that we may be able not only to identify our place of calling and ministry, but also the praise and uh, the, the call of being totally committed to the job. And we know that the Lord will continue to really bless all of us. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord do you good. Thank you because of the time that we have been together and especially thinking about the three levels, the levels of personal growth to commitment, the level which is the secondary level of the service to the body of our local church, and also the level of the ministry to the body of Jesus Christ all over the world. And when we commit ourselves to the kingdom of God, this is my parting shot. The Bible tells us that we should be strong. We should be steadfast in the service of the kingdom, in the book of the Thessalonians. And he continued to remind us, because our work in the Lord is not in vain. God is not unfaithful. God is not a man who can say a lie. When we commit ourselves to the kingdom of the service of God and we are fully committed, he will continue to bless us. He will bless our marriages, our families. He will bless everything about us. And do not forget what we said from the word because at the beginning. We said, and seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Brethren, may we set ourselves to the kingdom to the ministry and be fully committed to God and God will be committed to our case. God will be committed to his covenant and he will never ever put us to shame and we find God's blessings because he is a faithful God. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the journey we took and the way we have continued to take us through understanding the levels of our growth in our Christian commitment and service. And Father, we behold the very commitment you desire of us. And by faith, we pray that you strengthen us. We cannot do these things be alone, dear God. We pray for the grace of commitment. We pray for the grace of commitment to your service, the grace to put our hands to service, and the grace to have personal growth on, on, on this commitment. Help us, dear Lord, to surmount and even to stand against all the forces of discouragement and all the descending spirits, dear God, that may try to pull us away from commitment to your kingdom. And Father, may your word be true to us, that as we give ourselves to your kingdom, the Lord, we may continue to find your favor and blessing. We thank you for this day. We thank you for taking us through the whole week. And as we continue with this weekend and also ushering a new week, we pray that your favor and blessings will continue to rest upon us. Heal the sick among us. Continue to open doors for those who, dear Lord, are seeking that you open a door. Give peace to the disturbed, O oh God. And Father, continue by your grace to give us favor in whatever thing we do. And bless us indeed in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Let us uh, meet together tomorrow for the Sunday service as 10, at 10 in the morning. And I know that followed by the Sunday school service at 10.45. And I know that the Lord will continue to bless us and continue to give us his grace that we may continue to be committed to his cause. May the Lord bless you. Enjoy the weekend ahead. Mm -hmm.